In this video, we'll be looking at the names used to describe shapes of molecules, otherwise known as molecule geometry. Before we do that, we'll look at certain terms I'll be using. Terms like electron groups, bond pairs, lone pairs. So when I say number of electron groups, what I mean is the total number of bond pairs added to the number of lone pairs. And secondly, important, even though I use the term bond pairs, doesn't mean there's two electrons only. In this context, triple bonds, double bond, single bond, each one is considered one bond pair. For example, we have the molecule on the right here. The number of bond pairs will be one, two, and three. Right, even though this is a double bond, we still consider this as only one bond pair. So you can think of a bond pair as actually an electron group. We have one electron group, two electron groups, three electron groups. I'll change the molecule around. Right. This molecule, although it has a triple bond, this is still considered one bond pair, one electron group. So it also has three bond pairs. How about this molecule? It has three bond pairs and one lone pair. So total number of electron groups which is the summation of all of all of them, there'll be four electron groups. Four electron groups, three bond because of three bond pairs and one lone pair here. Right, why do we need to spend much time figuring out the number of electron groups? Because molecular geometry it can be simplified if we were to group them into number of electron groups. There are many shapes for the molecules which we will be going through all of them but the easiest way to do it is to realize the number of electron groups in the molecule first and then remember the very first shape that, they, that comes with it. So for example, for even though we have many shapes if you are able to memorize just the first shapes for each group, the ones that have an asterisk things to it, if you are able to memorize just the first shape, you will be able to derive the shapes for the other molecules within the same group. I'll show you how we do that uh, in this video. So let's start off with the simplest one, where there's two electron groups. If a molecule has two electron groups, they will be the electron the bonds will be situated as far away from each other as possible due to the repulsion. So it will be 180 degrees. It will be linear. Right? Even though it could be a triple bond and a single bond. Right, this is one group, this is two groups it will still be linear. So two electron groups, pretty simple, will be a linear shape for the molecule. We go to three electron groups. Right, I'll stick to single bonds from now on just to make it easier. If we have three single bonds, or three bond pairs and no lone pairs, zero LP, our number of electron groups will be the sum. We have three electron groups. The shape will be trigonal planar. Right? It's a triangle and it can lie on a plane. If you were to put it flat on the table, 
it will lie flat right that's why it's planar so we have trigonal planar you will see at the bottom of the screen we have what we call electron geometry and molecular geometry so this is the time i tell you the difference electron geometry will take into account the shapes contributed by all groups so the shape we have three groups here the electron geometry is trigonal planar molecular geometry will only take into account the shape contributed by bond pairs it will ignore the shape contributed by lone pairs here we do not have any bond pairs so we will still take into account we do not have any lone pairs so we still take into account all these bonds it is still trigonal planar what happens if we replace one of the bond pairs with a lone pair in other words we have two bond pairs and one lone pair right. first of all mentally you should be able to work out that it still belongs under the section where there's three electron groups because two bond pairs plus one lone pair so the shape will be here electron geometry will take into account the shape contributed by the lone pair also so it is still a trigonal planar shape for electron geometry for molecular geometry we will ignore the shape contributed by the lone pair we will just look at the bond pairs which is traced by my cursor here so this is a bent shape uh, it's, it's not linear but it is bent so if you can rem remember the trigonal planar but then ignore the shape contributed by the lone pair you will have the molecule that has two bond pairs and one lone pair let's move on to the ones that has four electron groups For electron groups, the simplest one, the basic shape will be made by four bond pairs and zero lone pairs. We will get a tetrahedral shape. The angles between the bonds will be 109.5. What happens if one of the bond pairs is replaced by a lone pair in other words we have three bond pairs one lone pair the electron geometry considering all electron groups will still be tetrahedral the molecular geometry will be only looking at the bonds the bonded electrons you can see that it's actually a looks like a pyramid with a base that has the shape of a triangle right, if I see view it from the top we have a triangle base pyramid so that's why we call it trigonal pyramidal what happens if we remove one bond pair and replace it with one more lone pair we have two bond pairs two lone pairs we have this molecule if we were to do the electron geometry you can see that it still holds the shape of a tetrahedral but more importantly will be the molecular geometry Molecular geometry will be just looking at the bonds here. Right, removing the, the visualization of the lone pairs. This will give us the bent shape. You should have seen the, seen the pattern by now, right? The electron geometry doesn't change within the group. So long as there are four groups, you'll be tetrahedral.